So I figured, let's make this, well, postcom. I haven't really made one of those before and actually failed to put on the microphone while I was recording this. I realized I could do this postcom. It's going to be nice. I'm going to like that. So this was actually quite a unique matchup. As you guys see, my opponent brings all this stuff to the table. Do not look forward to you no know, Fluttermain, the Salamence, the Great Tusk. There is a lot of things just I feel I gotta watch out for. I do recognize that I have a small perk in um, my Arivada, my Iron Threads, which might actually be able to deal with the majority of these mons barring Greninja. So I felt if I have an honest opportunity of pulling that off, I'm probably gonna make my main focus to make sure that the Iron Threads are working. So Ryu here is definitely just, just overall the matchup is scary enough for me to feel <laughs> no. <laughs> so my opponent leads off with uh, the Claude Sire as you know I get my Ajax going. Now here's the thing. I got two options. I, I either go for the massive Raver and just beat him, which I felt was probably my strongest play, or you turn out. But I felt I'd rather get this guy on on the leverage of just killing him. As uh, he stays in, which I felt was really surprising, goes with Cell Frogs. Uh, he has good switch ins here, so I kind of figure I'm gonna keep Brave Bird in because there's really nothing wrong with trying to avoid that. As uh, I was pretty sure opponent will not sack this Pokemon, try to find a gateway and reposition himself. Um, honestly, for the right reasons, I just felt Claude Sire is a really good Pokemon, but no, he decided to sack it. And that will open up the door for me quite a lot. As I am Scarfed, I am able to threaten whatever mods he got left. Um, even the Greninja is not safe unless it's Scarfed, so... I don't know, I, like I said, I felt my opponent had good switch-ins. Uh, maybe not the perfect ones, but Clothesire's sack was... Um, I felt that exchange wasn't worth it. Clothesire is just phenomenal in his own right. Uh, so here comes a gold ego, and um, I was thinking that I, I, I probably could get some damage going on here, but at the same time, there is nothing wrong with me of bringing in the iron threads. And initial thought it was I can take any type of damage you can throw at me. I am a soul vest, I should be able to survive anything, but he, he pulls a substitute on me. And uh, there's a small issue with substitute, that is, it's forcing me to actually hurt it. And. Um, I don't know how well I can take damage from this. Uh, if it is a nasty plot set, I'm always you know, scared of uh, anything that could um, go for Shadow Ball or even make it rain and actually hurt anyway. Uh, go for the easy earthquake as my opponent goes for nasty plot. So I was kind of thankful for that because it does mean that you know I am outspeeding, so it's not an issue now. And uh, I was leveling whether or not she just earthquake or rapid spin here on his potential switch out. But since Claude started, he did decide to sack it. I was kind of feel like. I am I am stupid not to not you know attack him. Uh, I did fear you know the, the Salamence coming in and whatnot, but I, fuck it, I went for it. The Greninja comes in. Uh, it's gonna take a massive hit, but it's gonna manage to live this. As I was leveling back and forth, do I take a higher puff from this? Do I have switch ins? But only like switch in I had was Appleton, which definitely dies to an ice beam. So I'm thinking, I take a higher pump, I rapid spin, I outspeed the whole the majority of the team, maybe even Flutter Main, and if so. I should be in a good position with my Arivada or my great friends just stop bring the hurting bombs. And uh, so that's what I did. And my opponent actually over predicts Ghost on Ice Beam. And th this couldn't be better for me. As yes, he got a crit and it sucks, but a Hydro Pump crit would have killed. So if this exchange says anything, it is definitely that I got the best out of this scenario. And um, well, now I'd speed his whole team. So I am definitely not scared whatsoever with the remaining mons. At least I can hurt whatever he throws in. And uh, to my surprise, and I really want to enforce this, he brings the Flutter Main. So I was thinking, alright, then it must be Scarfed. And, um, but here comes the Protosynthesis, and it's gonna boost his special attack, so it's not Scarfed either. So, so I just feel right, then it's a sitting duck. It's absolutely giant here. And I have no idea what this play was all about. <laughs> but I'll take it, I'll take it, <laughs> for sure. And, um,. Well, honestly, at this point, I am feeling that there aren't really that many mods that scares me now, and the only mods that I probably worry about are the Salamence or the, you know, the Roaring Moon. But here's the thing, it's going to activate the Protosynthesis, and it's going to boost its attack again. So now I know it's Adamant and not Jolly, so um, I'm going to get the damage on this, and I go for the Easy Ice Spinner. Um, I was worried about, you know, 
the usual part you know it's gonna activate its potential um, turret type it's gonna uh, revenge sweep me which they usually do but no nothing like that ice spinner do roughly half hp which means all right earthquake's gonna kill and he dragon dances now here's the issue with that dragon dance if he's adamant i steal out speed so I have no idea why they made this call, because it is definitely not a good one, and as he will experience here, he's gonna learn that the Iron Freds are, if left unchecked, um, most evil persons he ever fought, and I never see Iron Freds being this successful <laughs> ever. <laughs> so yeah, he should definitely quake there, or crunched. I mean, anything would have killed me with that attack boost, I have no idea why... Um, that wasn't to play in my opponent's mind, but I'll take it as I'm, I'll happily, you know, hurt him as much as possible. So I was convinced he's gonna DC here, there is no way he's gonna keep going. Uh, with his remaining mons, which basically is the um, Great Tusk and whatnot, uh, I feel in good enough position. Um, now, versus the Great Tusk, I have no switch-ins, there is nothing any of my mods can do and even less so with his boost and attack so i'm just gonna go for ice spinner get as much damage on there as possible and uh well sack it really and uh, honestly i felt happy about this ice spinner did nothing which leads me to think that this probably should have been his play all along as while great freds are well you know scary and has a great damage output it is not enough to deal with the great tusk which is clearly the superior one now, Ascending Appleton, basically, it's it's not a sack play, though it kind of is. I just want him to close combat so I can hurt him badly back, right? Um, because I think close combat should close to kill me with the boost in attack, but meh, nope, nope, nowhere near. And uh, Apple Acid is, um, is, is, is a boom, but a boom. It is not taking it. So yeah, Appleton got some, some showcase. Um, I'm quite disappointed I didn't get much, much more use out of Appleton, but at the same time, against the higher tier threats, honestly, there's a reason it isn't as used as much. And uh, with the remaining mods here, oh, Gold Ego, really, um, I just need to find a way to bring in my my Iron Moth, and from there I should be fine. Um, honestly, I, there should be nothing <laughs> that should stop me. But he pulls the surprise. Or, um, you know, the, the Liar's Reveal tech in uh, Gold Ego being pure Ghost, which means I can no longer abuse my Iron Moth for the Fiery Dance, but at the same time, it's not like he hurts like a whole lot. And Pinchurch, in all things considered, with this charge and rain, I should be able to get a pretty nice paralyzation and make very little, well, use. He should make very little use of this Gold Ego. That said, as you guys will see, if it is a 30% chance, we are definitely not seeing it whatsoever. But like I said, not like it really matters. I mean, at this point, that's his last mon. I should probably get something good out of it. But I did get worried here, because at the same time, now I treat these charges in, still no crippling. And I hope the fourth one thinking, come on, at least once, right? At least freaking once, but no no dice so i just felt uh i should probably stop doing this and uh, i mean how many trains turns i got left to the end of abuse the train yeah no no i should sack my mon um now like i said here star after and our mod should still be good enough but um yeah i just mm. <laughs> so i was really happy it's kind of attacked eventually because like i said i was considering whether or not it's just without to you know abuse the, the terrain after all, but no paralyzation, yeah, he stays pretty much as healthy as possible and my best play and only play I got left, no matter what, is Fiery Dance and uh, take it from there. And I might have been overdone it, but quite frankly I was scared I wouldn't be able to pull it off and if he managed to live this and recover, um, I might actually be dying to that Shadow Ball. I'm, I'm not sure and quite frankly I, I'm not willing to take that gamble. But Fire Dance with the boosted Third Type Fire is enough to just get the win and that will seal the fate of this opposing opponent. So, with that, guys, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, also, what do you think about post narrative games? Does it work? Does it not work? Do you prefer live? <laughs> you really want to know. That's it. Take care, everyone. Bye.